Uh, Mr. President, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to speak with us. Um, we're curious, what does success look like for you here at COP26? Why did you come all the way to Glasgow and what do you hope to achieve by being here? Well, first of all, um, Kyle, thank you for this opportunity. And, uh, you know, this uh, it is a long ways to come all the way to Glasgow. Hard to justify all those miles that you're flying and probably the carbon footprint that we're uh, wasting to get here. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's about getting commitments and moving the agenda uh, toward 1.5 that's so important. Because our islands are going under. Our livelihoods are being destroyed. Our, our homes are being destroyed. That's the reality that we live in. And we need commitment. We need, we need action. So coming to Glasgow, that's what we want to see. And, you know, it, it is an opportunity to share the realities that we live in, but at the same time, get countries motivated to commit. And I think uh, the last few days have at least uh, given us a little bit of hope that things are moving in the right direction, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done. And, um, you know, I think what we need to do is hold countries accountable. People sometimes don't like to use the word of climate justice, but I think at some point we need to do that. Uh, we cannot continue to just ignore because if there is, uh, if we ignore it uh, and kick the can down the road, uh, it's just going to get worse. And I don't think it's just the islands that are going to be impacted, it's the whole world. That's right. So that's why we need to act as swiftly and as uh, urgently as possible. So that's what we're hoping to accomplish, and but it cannot just be Palau. It, can, it has to be everyone. And uh, unfortunately, our friends from the Pacific, the other 11 countries that are not here because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, that's what even a bigger reason why we wanted to make sure that we were here. Because we just want the islands' voices to be heard uh, and action to be taken. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. President, I know oceans are very important to you. Can you talk about why you believe oceans are critical to solving the climate crisis and what we need to do about it? Well, as you know, uh, oceans provide 50% of the oxygen for the world, right? And uh, they are the biggest uh, carbon sequester, right? So we, uh, coral reefs are so important and critical. Uh, Palau, uh, in 2007, embarked on a program um, of marine protected areas to preserve the coral reefs. And now we're preserving the whole EEZ and managing it. And there is an important link between the ocean uh, crisis and the climate crisis. And, and, and solving the climate crisis is solving the ocean crisis. So we need to take radical action. Uh, Palau is doing all it can by doing marine preserves, protecting them, combating IUU and, and protecting the oceans. We need all countries to also take the same bold action uh, because we're just a small part of the world. And, but uh, as a large ocean state, we're doing all we can to do our part. And that's all we ask from the rest of the countries around the world is do your part and we can turn this around. So. Thank you so much. You know, speaking of everyone else doing their part, uh, we know that Palau has not contributed a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions, but stands to lose everything from climate chaos. What are your demands of rich countries here at COP? Our demands are we need to take action. 1.5 is, is where we need to be. And, you know, it was encouraging at the hack to see commitments by the United States, by, uh, of course, France and Germany. And that's what we need commitments from those other big countries that are out there. And, and we demand accountability because if you want to continue to emit large amounts of carbon, then you need to make sure that you compensate or take care of those that are deeply affected. And we need climate justice. I mean, it's, you know, if, if you want to continue to pollute, you must pay. I think that's really what uh, the message is. And I, 
you know, it's, it's about equity. And why should the benefit of the large emitters be the consequence or the de to the detriment of the, of the small countries that really, at the end of the day, have the least voice? So no country should be allowed to accept the fact that they'll be wipe, wiped off the face of the earth. Right? That should not be an option. Uh, can you imagine if we said now a country that has a billion people is no longer a country? No. They would fight for it. And I believe as Pacific Islands, we need to fight for our right to exist as islands. And, That's right. And, and people and cultures and languages. We don't want to lose those forever. We, and we have, the, th the thing about climate is we have the power to make the difference, right? It wasn't like a catastrophic event that got rid of the dinosaurs. This is human induced. And it, the human, the human species can solve it. It just takes all of us working together. So. Thank you so much. I'm, we're with you, 100%. Um, you know, the formal commitments that are being made here at Glasgow are not binding legally for nations. Um, this won't be the end. This is just another step in the road. How do we keep the work focused in the days, months, and years after COP to make climate action a reality? What specifically needs to be done? Well, most of all, you know, we need to talk to people's hearts. Mm. You need to have a moral commitment to care about your fellow citizen of the world because we're all citizens of the world, right? And I think that's really where it comes down to. That's why this is the United Nations. Everybody needs to be part of it. We need, we need to solve problems together. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes when we become so individualistic and we just think about our own countries and our own people, we forget that that impact, how it impacts other people's lives. So we need to just continue the momentum that has been started at COP. And uh, that momentum just gives us hope. And yes, uh, the World Bank says we need $4 trillion. $100 is getting there, but we need more commitments, right? Uh, I heard last night that uh, there's $132 trillion that the banks have now allocated that say, let's, you know, we're not going to give you loans if, you're, if you don't have a green strategy in there, you know? And that, that's, a, that, that's a signal that the world, not only in the government sector, but the private sector, is taking those bold steps. And we need radical action, and you know we need we need to turn this around, and I believe that we can. Uh, but we've got to keep pushing. We cannot just drop the baton and say we've done it. No, we haven't done it. There's more work to be done, and we just got to keep pushing. So that's why we're headed to Palau for oceans, and keeping that momentum going on February 16th and 17th, and on to Portugal, and keep on going back to COP next year, and just keep the message out there that. We have to do this, we can do it, and uh, it's time. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank President, you. for all your leadership, for your fight, and for your heart. Really grateful for this time. Thank you.